best time to see a lot of these is when you're doing a liver cleanse. I don't know if, if you have been doing liver cleanses, but they are a good thing to do. And just by way of finishing the sentence I started earlier, wasn't sure I should tell you this, um, at my last liver cleanse, I saw about 20 varieties I could not, I could not identify, and of course my two major ones that I've not been able to kill. I've been able to get them down, and of course I could take medicine for arthritis, but that's not going to find a cure, and um, then I'll suffer from the medicine. So, uh, so we're in the in the middle of finding how to kill our parasites uh, in whatever way that's useful. Why are we so parasitized? That's the problem. And the reason is we have no immunity protection anymore. And we have evidence of that. If you stop drinking chlorinated water, you can um, improve your health. Then we, the parasitism goes way down immediately, just in two days. And the reason is not the chlorine in the water, but this item that I call ferrocyanide. Water has cyanide added to it. That was started decades and decades ago, possibly a hundred years. Because this compound, ferrocyanide, and there's a sister compound called ferricyanide, they were added to water a uh, hundred years ago already. They were discovered more than a hundred years ago. It's, they're about 200 years old as discoveries. And they were put into the leather industry, the photography industry, and many other industries use those. Notice that it's a combination of cyanide and iron. Ferro means iron. Ferri means iron. They find each other quickly because they're so reactive with each other. So here you have an iron cyanide that has been added to all our water. Because in those days, everybody had metal pipes. And if you put bleach in metal pipes, because all the water was going to be bleached, then that's called chlorination, uh, then those pipes are going to corrode terribly and get rusted and get scale, full of scale and so on. They found that this iron cyanide would protect the pipes. <coughs> of course, you have to drink the consequences. But, so it maybe should have been replaced quite quickly as soon as pipes could be changed to plastic, but it wasn't done. All your water has cyanide in it. It's either ferro or ferri. If it is ferro, you are going to be victimized. Ferro causes cancer because Fasciolopsis busci and onion and garlic oil and so on only combine with the ferro to complete the carcinogen. I'll repeat that in another way. If your water happens to have ferri, it does not cause cancer because the parasite busci and these oils will not combine with ferri. And so you cannot make this big carcinogen that causes cancer. So what do you have, ferro or ferri? And if you have your water sample with you, 
I'll show you how to test it using this device tomorrow. There's a demonstration period after the lecture, and that I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to learn to use it, but still you should be taught. And, and, and how you can use it to find anything. You could find anything in your body or out of your body because a radio, it works on the radio principle and it simply uh, amplifies uh, some frequency that's coming out of you just like your radio does and it doesn't matter if the person's singing or talking or, or making some other kind of noise and, and other things would be possible along that line too. So you can, if you want to know whether, uh, let's say, your pet uh, has an ulcer in the stomach, you could easily work with that pet's saliva sample and look and, and specify the stomach, just the way you specify a station with the radio, and you would put a sample of stomach on into your circuit on the plate and you could either buy such a sample it's called a microscope slide of the stomach or you could go to this grocery store and get whatever is stomach there's a lot of that around still then you could look in the stomach of the cat or the dog or the horse or whatever and find out whether whether the animal ate a piece of metal Barbed wire is very commonplace for cows. Or you could find out if, if the animal has an ulcer or if the animal has this carcinogen in it, in the stomach. So it's pretty straightforward, very exciting work to do. That's why I call it self-health. You can do it yourself now. You can find out what uh, the problem is and where it is and what it's doing. And by the time you can do all that, of course, you can try different things to cure it or treat it somehow, and then you can see whether you're effective or not. So you have the whole system together that empowers you more than any big institute ever was empowered. I have a few more minutes. I want to tell you more about parasitology and how fascinating it is. For two kinds of lymphomas, they are the uh, Hodgkin's and the non-Hodgkin's, the parasite is about 10 feet long. Yes. If you saw in the, uh, after a liver cleanse in the toilet bowl, something that long, uh, you might scream, <laughs> but it is very, very fine, thinner than a hair. Now, how would you be able to deal with that? And what I use is a plastic fork, <laughs> as if it were a spaghetti. You would be able to uh, guess at the length of a piece of spaghetti if you knew how many turns you took approximately, and these things actually get to be 20 feet long. So you just didn't want to scare you so much. <coughs> they are that long. And they are called filaria because they're filaments. They belong to a group called filaria. Now, dog heartworm is a filaria. It's called dirofilaria. But we have Another one, it's also a filaria, and it is uh, Oncocerca. Oncocerca is our other big filaria. And one causes Hodgkin's, and the other one causes um, non-Hodgkin's. And so there, for, that, for those cancers, you don't only have this big carcinogen, but also uh, the filaria to deal with. And that's what makes them somewhat different. <coughs> now, if you go to another page here called, uh, 
called Pathogens Requirements. Okay, page three. It's called Parasite Essential Foods. So that was the breakthrough that might have come around two or three years ago. That it is very, very difficult to kill your parasites because you can't get away from water. If you're constantly drinking uh, one of those iron cyanides, you're constantly linking yourself to your main parasite. And if it's busky, it will be cancer. But if it is not busky, if it's oncocerca or, or there are quite a few others, it will be a different disease because you will have a different bunch of mutations. Now look at parasite essential foods. That was the breakthrough. In other words, parasites don't live in you because they just uh, have food, shelter, and clothing. Uh, they don't live in you just because it's warm and watery and has sugar and salt. No. They need something that you have. It's an amazing concept. In other words, they, each of them have to have something that we would call a vitamin. They have to have their specific minerals and vitamins just like we do. We have become dependent on them. And here you see Fasciolopsis down at the bottom. They require onion, garlic, or mustard Raw onion, okay, I, I mentioned the exact chemical names. And here's the pancreatic fluid. It requires something in lemons. If it's the same parasite, you might as well unify all those. And that is what we find. This is the parasite. And it requires corn. Something in corn. And if you, and oh, diarophilaria, okay, there's a familiar one. That's the one that causes either Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's. And all you have to do is stop drinking milk. And that animal, that parasite, will disappear because you're not feeding it anymore. And I have never been able to see, because it happened so quickly, they know it in two days whether you're feeding them or not. And if not, they start to disappear, and I don't know just how they disappear. They don't die, because then you would be sick. As soon as you kill parasites so that there's some dead mess left, you get sick. And that's called detoxification syndrome. And, and when we start to get rid of this carcinogen, then the whole game is up for cancer in your body. And many things have to die, and you get detoxification syndrome unless you know what it, what, what's happening to you, and you guard against it. And we do that with herbs, but that's another story.